I think the first thing to say, it's not been a conscious preparation because we've always hoped we wouldn't get to this stage. But um, I think what we have done is been incredibly busy uh, in the background. Um, there's a lot of work on uh, the investigation side. It's kept me incredibly busy over the last four to six weeks. Kate's had more to do with the Amber campaign. We've got young children. I mean, it's, it's pretty much a day by day, day, week by week, to be honest. I mean, we didn't look too far ahead, really. Um, as Jerry said, we didn't want to get to this point. Um, now that we've got to this point, we need to use that opportunity, I guess, to focus on what's important, which is Madeline. We're making a very big effort to get the message out again. So in its latest form, what, what is the message you're giving on this first anniversary? Well, the message is Madeline is still missing and she needs to be found. And we, I guess we're urging people to, to help us still. And I know people have helped us from day one. But we still need that help, and Madeline still needs that help, and we need that key bit of information. This could all be over. Sure, I think this is really a direct appeal. We would not be here if we were not appealing to the public to come forward. To those who have actually phoned with information, whether it be to the police or a hotline, we want you to rack your brains. If you're in and around Pride Deluge, someone knows something that could unlock this, and that's the key thing for us, getting that information. I would ask to show this if it's okay. We have got a new hotline number. It's 0845 838 4699. We will guarantee anonymity for anyone who wants it. All information will be treated confidentially. I mean, you've been very thorough. You've had a very, very high profile over the past year. What, what makes you think? Higher than we would like. Well, of course, but, uh, what, but, but it's been at least effective in campaigning terms. You've had a high, high profile. What makes you hope that a year on, someone's going to turn up a fact or a hint which could make the difference? Well, she's still missing. She hasn't been found. So obviously there's still that bit of information there. And, I, you know, somebody definitely knows something, and they may not realise that you know, it's linked, but there might be something that they remember from that day or around that day, which is vital. It just takes a few things to slot into place. I think that's right, though, because this time of year, people are going to be saying, thinking about summer holidays, going away this time last year, and it will bring it home to people. When were you last in contact with the Portuguese police about the investigation? Uh, I think we don't really have any direct contact. There's some contact between uh, our Portuguese solicitor. Do you ask for information? Do you, do, you, do you ask for updates on the campaign or have you just given up on asking? I mean, we'd very much like to know exactly what has been done, uh, what hasn't been done, who's been eliminated and on what grounds and what leads are still being actively followed. And uh, that information has not uh, been forthcoming to us. This is a crime. It's a horrific crime against a young child. And I think we need to focus on that. You know, Madeline is still missing and a hideous crime has been committed. And that person is still out there. As fellow parents, you know, lots of people, we talk about the case, obviously, it's a natural thing to do. It's been um, in the forefront of people's minds. And one of the questions that lots of people have asked over the months is, how do you maintain the hope that you might find her alive? And what keeps that hope in place? Well, number one, Madeline is so important to us, and to Sean and Emily. Number two, there is no evidence absolutely no evidence that any harm has come to her. And three, if you look at, for example, the states where, you know, they, they have a lot of statistics relating to this kind of crime, um, children are recovered. You know, a lot of children are recovered, and the younger the child, the better the chance of that. As a parent, you know, you cannot give up on your child. You would not give up, and you will do anything. And what a disservice it would be to Madeline to assume otherwise without any evidence. Yeah. How do you manage life at home with your twins who as you've said many times deserve as normal an upbringing as they can be given in these circumstances how do you keep that going and you know where do you get your strength from to do that well, i think your children give you the strength for sure i mean um you know sean and Amelia are, are amazing little people and uh you know, they're very happy and they, they actually have a very normal life. I mean, you know, they go to nursery two days a week and the other days um, when they're at home, we do lots of normal things that anyone would do with the children. Um, we do spend a lot of the evenings, obviously, working. 
um, and obviously there's quite a few phone calls and emails and things. Um, but their life, their life is, is, is as normal as it could be, but they haven't got their big sister. But how, how present is Madeline in the house? I mean, you talk and... Very. So that, 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 doesn't, that no. doesn't change in that sense. Madeline's still a big part of Sean and Emily's life and they've still spent, you know, two-thirds of their life with Madeline being ever-present and there's constant reminders and, you know, we've taken a lot of professional advice about how best to manage this situation and uh, whether they would have been adapting as well as they have <laughs> without that advice. I think probably they would, but for much for our own assurances, but they have been fantastic, and I don't think we would have coped without them. But there's been a big extended family role, friends in this, and the overwhelming support we've had from the vast majority of the public has really lifted us and driven us on. You were in Pride Deluge and the days afterwards, and um, the feeling really, there was, a, a, it was almost like a tidal wave of, um, emotion came back and that really helped lift us. And it still does, I mean, you know, we still get so much mail and support from people and it, it really does lift you, you know, it's... Do you mind me asking I, something that lots of parents have, have asked me doing this story, which is, what do you say to your young twins when they ask questions? I mean, how have you dealt with that, with their, with their questions and their queries? Well, I guess there's still only three. I mean, mm. as Jerry said, they, they talk about Madeline a lot, which is which is lovely. It's um, you know, they ju they just say Madeline's missing, and we say yeah, we're all looking for her, and it doesn't really go into any more depth than that, um, and it doesn't need to at the minute, because they you know they're, they're not asking anything else. You know, we've always believed, and we've been told that it's best to be honest, yeah. and we'll always be honest with them. Uh, often in the press, where people have said things like, you know, you can't show emotion and all the rest of it when you're already under enormous pressure, um, how have you coped with that? You'd be lying if you said it wasn't hurtful, yeah. and it is amazing how so many people can have such an opinion um, on things that they know nothing about. Um, but again, it's a derailment, you know, and. Yes, it takes you away from it for a minute, but you just got to get back on track, you know. You had a very high-profile visit to Europe where you were promoting the Amber Alert scheme, and there are signs today that um, you know, the support for that among members of the European Parliament is still growing. Um, why have you locked onto this particular scheme as one which you'd like to promote? It's one of the things that we encountered very, very early on and clearly as a parent when your child goes missing you want everything done and even on the night we were saying things like have the borders been alerted, you know, ports, various things and your worry is that that child is going to be moved and moved quickly far away, away from the scene of the crime. You've both been very honest over the last year about the questions you've asked about your own actions when Madeline disappeared and the doubts you've had and the criticisms you levelled at yourselves. Are you finding it easier not to be so self-critical a year on or not? We've talked about our guilt. Um, from the minute we discovered Madeline missing, we've tried to focus on what can still be done. And dwelling on the negatives, you can't change what's happened. And as much as we would love to have turned the clock back and decided not to have gone uh, to the tapas uh, restaurant that night, we can't change it. And what we need to focus on and what we're asking the public to do is to concentrate on what can still be done. Madeline is a gorgeous little girl. She's still out there and, you know, we're asking for help, really, to find her. And for those who say, okay, that, you know, the campaign has been running maximum energy for a year and to then ask questions about how long you can sustain that kind of campaign and the kind of energy and commitment that it needs and the fact that it clearly affects your entire lives. What do you say to people? And you know, we'll never give up on Madeline. You know, I want Madeline back. We need to find Madeline and that's what keeps us going.